Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. As always, it's a great day to be at the House of Lord. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Uh, need to uh, conduct just a little bit of business uh, here uh, at the beginning. Johnny got an email uh, this past week uh, from our children's and youth ministries. Uh, summer camp's coming up. And uh, I believe in the past, our class has helped with the scholarships. Uh, that they offer. Camps have become really, really expensive. Uh, camp this year is $350 per camper. And uh, so there's uh, some folks, uh, I think they've had 12 that have applied for scholarships at this present time, and they're expecting even more to apply for scholarships uh, so these kids can go to kids camp, youth camp. Uh, you know, there's a big part. Is it away camp? Or I, it's it's a away a camp. And, uh, you know, these camps can be very instrumental in changing these kids' lives in a very positive way toward their walk with God. Uh, so I think it's a very, very important uh, aspect, very important ministry for our church. And uh, like I say, I, uh, Johnny believes uh, that uh, in the past we've uh, helped. Uh, with this cause, and my question to y'all this morning is do we want to sponsor a scholarship or multiple scholarships? That's, that's a decision that y'all would need to make. So, is there any comment or... Uh, yes, Bob? I think we Hang on. If we can afford Hang on. Hang on. If we can afford it, I think two scholarships would be pretty nice. Okay, Mary Lee, you probably answer that better. Okay, is that a motion? So moved. Uh, Bob makes a motion. Uh, second. We've got a second here. Uh, all those in favor, if you just raise your hand for me. I think that's a positive. So uh, we will, uh, Mary Lou, if you could kind of take care of that for us and uh, making sure that the church knows that we're going to sponsor two of these kiddos uh, to camp this, uh, this summer. So thank you all uh, very much in uh, helping with that. Um, prayer notes, Weldon Walker, if you'd make use of those uh, slips of paper this morning and write Weldon a note, and uh, I'm sure that he would appreciate getting those. And then birthdays on the 30th, we have Harriet Shear. Uh, Bob informed me that she was a former president of this class at one time. It's in an assisted living uh, place right now, but uh, let's uh, remember Harriet. Uh, on her birthday. Let's go ahead and sing Happy Birthday. She may be watching. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday So let's remember Brandon's. What's their last name? I, Barnes. Brandon Barnes. 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 That's right. Uh, anyway, they were a good friend, uh, uh, related to Dorothy and, and well, I mean Dorothy, Lois and Weldon. Uh, I'll get it out here in a minute. Lois and Lowell, uh, and uh, then their uh, children were very, very good friends with uh, John, our choir director. Uh, with his children, so uh, uh, that was a connection uh, we had with the church. So remember that family in prayer. Uh, let's uh, be sure and pray for all the folks affected uh, by the tornadoes uh, to the south of us, and then last night and into this morning for those in North Texas. I believe they said that they're counting at least six dead up in that area there's a shell station that had collapsed where people had taken refuge and they're still trying to uh, get folks out of that shell station so uh, where denton where denton denton area uh, yes so let's remember remember these folks uh, i had a couple of cousins that were affected in the temple area uh, didn't lose their homes, but uh, without power for four days. I know uh, 
First Baptist and Temple, they canceled all their services this morning. They're still without power uh, at their church. Uh, so, uh, and it just so happens, you know, this power outage, some of them, you know, we're under heat advisories and everything else uh, with this. So remember the folks to the north of us and the south of us uh, uh, in our prayers. Uh, Dean to member Barbara and Weldon. Kendall, it's good to see you this, uh, this morning. Uh, Beth, we're going to continue. Beth got her bees taken care of. Uh, I asked her if she got any honey on it. She said no. And uh, so anyway, let's remember Beth. Uh, Reese, this 19-year-old uh, young lady that I've been requesting prayer for, need to continue to lift her up. Uh, Jean and Freda, uh, we need to continue to pray for. Uh, Brenda and Paul and Helen and Charles, uh, need to continue to lift them up in prayer. Uh, Kathy and Branch, uh, Hank, uh, we need to pray for them. Dorothy, you have a, a prayer request? Lois. I'm, Lois. I look like a Dorothy, he knows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we had asked you to pray a couple weeks ago for a little nephew, the Robinson policeman who fell in the hole out on Bull High Creek Road. And don't try to go Bull High Creek Road. Nothing has been done to that huge hole. But the blessing is, because he didn't know whether he would have eyesight in one eye from the airbags pressure, uh, it's getting better. And so he's very hopeful that he will be able, his name is William Hughes, but he's still, you know, not able to work. But uh, anyway, um, the hole has not been repaired on Little High Creek Road where his car fell in. So. Any other prayer? Sure. I didn't have far to go. No. Uh, Alice Lively will have a procedure done Tuesday. It's called a Watchman implant. And I didn't know what that was, but it's a mesh screen that is put in the artery to keep the clots from going to the heart and to the brain. Tuesday at Providence. I have a text from John Fidel last night. He had hoped to come home today, but because of the Memorial Weekend, they're not going to release him until Tuesday, so he'll come home Tuesday. Was that true? No. Okay. Any other prayer requests? Wait a minute. You got to wait. I'm learning. Hack is home and doing well. He's um, really got a great attitude, and he commented on um, watching our video at some point. And he said, boy, y'all got a great president now. <laughs> so kudos to you. Well, thank you. Any praises this morning? Yes, sir. Well, I want to thank everybody for the prayer notes. I had a wonderful week in the prayer notes. I mean, if any of y'all get ones like I get, it's great. <laughs> Any other praises? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your presence here this morning. And we pray that you will lift our hearts as we sing songs of praise, encourage us as we call on your name in prayer, and help us to listen intently for God's word in all that is said and done. Lord, for those who have served and are, and are serving in our armed forces, and for those who have given their last full measure in service for their country, help us to always remember their sacrifice. Help us to not just view this Memorial Day as another holiday or time off from work, but as a day to truly remember. Lord, we give you thanks and praise for your abundant grace. In the days of old, you parted the waters with a mighty hand so that your people could cross safely and escape their pursuers. The waters not only parted in the Red Sea with Moses, but also in the Jordan with Joshua. We remember these mighty acts and so in the same way, Lord, grant safe passage 
to all who need it today. Passage through the turmoil of illness, grief, and despair. Passage through poverty and oppression. Passage perhaps through toil and snares of our own devising where chaos swirls around us like mighty waters, lead us by your spirit. Forgive the times we do not trust you, when we demand miracles on our own timetable. Give us the courage and faith to seek, uh, speak out for those in need of liberation and injustice. Give us the words to witness to your life-changing gospel in a lost and dying world. Lord, for those who are sick and recovering, and we've called them by name in your presence this morning, Lord, we ask that your healing hand would be upon them. For those who have lost loved ones, we pray that your peace and comfort would surround them in their grief. Lord, we praise you this morning, saying, I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. With my mouth, I will make your faithfulness known through all generations. I will declare that your love stands firm forever, that you have established your faithfulness in heaven itself. We pray this in the precious name of Jesus, and everyone agreed by saying, Amen. Amen. Uh, one last uh, thing, I, I read an article this morning. Uh, two young missionaries in Haiti were killed, uh, I believe Thursday. Uh, and uh, so we need to remember that, those families that are affected by that. Folks, you know, we've got missionaries around the world, and it's, it's not a safe world uh, anymore. So we really need to be lifting up these folks that are sharing God's love, and God's peace, God's forgiveness uh, with a lost world. Uh, so let's lift up those, uh, those folks that are uh, in this mission work worldwide for us. I'm out. Well, thank you for praying for Brandon and his family. And I'd just like to, he was under treatment for 380 days and determined to fight it. And he never said, why me, to anybody. And I mean, he's a strong man of faith. And if you could read his obit, it's Fall's Funeral Home in Valley Mills. But it is a wonderful obituary. He played football at McMurray. Quite an athlete, big guy. Started with a polyp in his nose that was cancerous. And so, but he never, ever complained. Uh, and so, he's quite a Christian man. Uh, to, to be able to deal with everything he dealt with. He'd been in the cancer center since last July in Dallas. So, uh, 39 years old. Let me just follow up on what Bill said about missionaries in Haiti. I don't know when you said it, but there were four killed by gangs Thursday and I read about in detail. One was a, I think, a state representative of Missouri. It's his daughter, husband, had been down there for several years. They were two of the four that got killed. And it's just, Haiti is a terrible place right now to go. It is terrible. So it's just gone crazy. Anyway, right the whole country. Thank you for being here. Good crowd. Um, I watched the, well, I heard thunder like some of you did, and some of you might have gotten brain like that. But I watched this one storm, and it, it just missed us by about three or four miles. And then I said, well, we got another one coming. We don't need the rain. I just, it got maybe 10 miles, 15 miles from Waco, and then just went south toward clean. So, you know. Uh, it, it was fun just listening to the thunder. <laughs> okay, this one reads, and I know the answer, so don't laugh. You may not be 70 yet, but I think you'll want to read this. Okay, so. 
this is what all of you 70 plus year olds and yet to be kids have to look forward to. This is something that happened at an assisted living center. True story. The people who live there have small apartments, <coughs> but they all eat at a central cafeteria. One morning, one of the residents didn't show up for breakfast, so my wife went upstairs and knocked on his door to see if everything was okay. And she could hear him through the door. He said that he was running late and would be down shortly. So we went back to the, she went back to the dining area. An hour later, he, had, he hadn't arrived, so she went back up towards the room and found him on the stairs. And he was coming down the stairs but having a heck of a time. He had a death grip on the handrail and seemed to have trouble getting his legs to work right. So she told him she was gonna call an ambulance. But he said, no, 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 don't do that. It, it, it wasn't in the pain, it just, I just want to have his breakfast, want to have breakfast. So she helped him to the rest, rest way down the stairs, and he had his breakfast. When he tried to, when he tried to return to his room, he was completely unable to even get to the first step. So they called an ambulance. <clears throat> A couple hours later, she called the hospital to see how he was doing, and the receptionist there said, "Oh, he's fine." He just had both, both of his legs and one leg of his boxer shorts. Some of these are this. I got this in 2013. Uh, so it's been a while since I've read it. Things that I learned living in the South. A possum is a flat animal that sleeps in the middle of the road. <laughs> There are 5,000 types of snakes, and 4,998 of them live in the South. <laughs> there are 10,000 types of spiders. All 10,000 live in the South, plus a couple that no one's ever seen before. <laughs> Trust me, if it grows, it'll stick you. If it crawls, it'll bite you. Once and twice are words. Once and twice. <laughs> it's not a shopping cart, it's a buggy. <laughs> okay, this is a little off base, but I'm going to do it anyway. J A W L dash T. Y'all pee? Means. Did y'all go to the bathroom? <laughs> You said it before, so laugh, okay? <laughs> People actually grow, eat, and like okra. In the South, now, fixing is one word. It means I'm going to do that. I'm fixing to. <laughs> There's no such thing as lunch. There's only dinner, and then there's supper. The word jet, J-E-E-T, is actually a question meaning, did you eat? Did you eat? Did you eat? You don't have to wear a watch because it doesn't matter what time it is. You work until it's done, or, too, or unless it's too dark, to see. You don't push buttons, you mash them. <laughs> y'all is singular. All y'all is plural. <laughs> <laughs> All the festivals across the state are named after a fruit, a vegetable, a grain, an insect, or an animal. You carry jumper cables in your car, 
for your own car. <laughs> you only own five spices, okay? Salt, pepper, mustard, Tabasco, and ketchup. <laughs> okay. All right, the fried catfish is the other white meat. <laughs> you think that the first day of deer season is a national holiday. Everyone you meet is a honey. Sugar. Miss first name or Mr. first name. Honey, sugar. Okay. I'll stop there. I'm going to need two readers. Uh, <laughs> chapter 7 in Mark. Verses 1 through 23, if you brought the Bible. But I need uh, two readers. One of them, uh, chapter 7, 1 through 11, and then 12 through 23. Who do 1 through 11 for me? Who wants to borrow my Bible? Come on. Okay, Beth, you'll take the first one, 1 through 11. Who'll take 12 through 23? Okay, thank you. All right, let me uh, back up here a title of this is God's Truth versus Tradition. Tradition's a big word. Um, situation. Jesus' popularity uh, sparked envy and concern among the religious leaders of the of this of his time. He was breaking too many rules. His disciples were playing fast and loose with tradition. A huge collection of rules for giving for living and gradually developed that had gradually developed that were supposed to reflect the central teaching of God's word. In fact, Many of these turned out to be subtle ways to deflect and contradict God's instructions as Jesus illustrated in the following episode. Let's have first reader first. Beth? The Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus and saw some of his disciples eating food with hands that were unclean that is unwashed. The Pharisees and all Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a, cer a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. When they came from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash, and they observe many other traditions, such as washing cups, pitchers, and kettles. So the Pharisees and teachers of the law asked Jesus, why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating their food with unclean hands. He replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about your, you hypocrites. And as, as it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Did I skip a page? No. no. Okay. <clears throat> They worship me in vain, their teachings are but rules taught by men. 
You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to the traditions of men. And he said to them, You have a fine way of setting aside the commands of God in order to observe your own traditions. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and anyone who curses his father and mother must be put to death. But you say, if a man says to his father or mother, whatever help you might otherwise have received from me is carbon, that is a gift devoted to God. A gift to God, okay, thank you, Beth. Beth? Then you no longer let them do anything for their father or mother. Thus you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down, and you do many things like that. Again, Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside a person can defile them by going into them. Rather, it is what comes out of a person that defiles them. After he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about this parable. Are you so dull, he asked. Don't you see that nothing that enters a person from the outside can defile them? But it, For it doesn't go into their heart, but into their stomach, and then out of the body. In saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean. He went on, what comes out of a person is what defiles them. For it is from within, out of a person's heart that evil thoughts come. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and defile a person. Yeah, that's very good. Thank you. I'll go back to verse 18 and Jesus said it's one of those times when you could see the expression on his face and frustration. This is Jesus. He's human, okay? Jesus said, do you still not understand? Have you, don't you get it? He, got, he gets frustrated sometimes, but he did here. Um, according to Jewish tradition, what did the disciples do so wrong here in this story? What did they do? They ate without washing their hands. Hang on, hang on one second. They ate without washing their hands first. Yeah, big deal, huh? They didn't grow up in the South. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? That's that's one of the big issues, and it's just and, and the traditionalist, the Pharisee, whoever looked at this and saw this, and they talked and they said, I mean, they, you wonder what they called them that's not in scripture, you know. There's lots of words that apply. Uh, what did Jesus find so hypocritical about the Pharisees and their traditions? Traditions, plural. <laughs> well, uh, they may be clean on the outside, but they were they were unclean on the inside. What came out of them was unclean. So, then did, 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 did you know good to be clean? On the outside, you could be clean on the inside. Yeah. Good point. Others? Anybody else? Got a good group this morning. Thank you for being here again. Yes, ma'am. Well, they were uh, not following what the, the leaders thought was so important. Uh, you know, they thought that was more important, and yet people could wash all day long and they weren't following the Ten Commandments. Yep. It was all lip service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. 
He just said, all show. All show is no go, I guess. <laughs> what, what was the meaning of Jesus' parable? What, what was the foundation of, that's the word I'm going to use, uh, what was the meaning of this parable? what's in a person's heart. But God always can. That's good. Okay. Kind of a follow-up. Why didn't the disciples understand the parable? <coughs> of all people, why didn't they understand? Questions, I'm going to tell you, get a little harder. So then, this one's easy, okay? I think it might be partly because it's a new way of looking at things. The traditional way was what they had all been used to, and now Jesus is turning that upside down. Completely opposite of tradition. Well, we, we've done it all of our lives that way, okay? Uh, Why was it easier to follow religious rules rather than to develop an intimate relationship with God? Why was it easier to follow religious rules? Well, why? To have an intimate relationship with God? Yes, ma'am. Well, the rules were clear. They were probably written down somewhere. They were told from the time they were a small child this is what we do and you have to dig deep to really develop a relationship with god yeah. you have to go it didn't it, there aren't rules for it they're not written down for us you also got to remember that the jews were the only ones that had these rules and the gentiles didn't necessarily follow those rules yeah Little side sidebar here. I'm out. You know, I'm sorry. I was just going to say it's impossible to develop an intimate relationship with Jesus or God if you don't have it in your heart. Anything good comes from your heart yep. because Jesus' spirit is within yep. you. Yeah. <clears throat> well, well expressed. Um, I've told you this before, but. Um, my best friends growing up for many, many years, uh, there were four of us. Myself, a Methodist, a little shorter guy, Jewish. Daddy was a doctor in charge of the tuberculosis hospital, a big job in, in Tyler. Another one was Catholic, uh, and the fourth was a nothing. He was a little crazy, a little wild, but we loved him. But the four of us got along so wonderful, but I did learn in all of those years things about the Jewish faith and the Jewish, I guess, way of lifestyle is a little different. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, his first name was Andy. And he loved to come to our house because on Saturday morning, Mother cooked about two pounds of bacon. <laughs> right, two pounds of bacon, you know, big black skillet. And my friends loved to eat bacon. And Andy could eat a half a pound of bacon by himself. And uh, he said, now don't tell Mama. Uh, little things like that you just never forget. But uh, anyway, it was, it was, fun growing up with 
such distinctive, uh, in, uh, you know, I went to his synagogue on occasions just to see what it was like. It, to me, it was very uncomfortable. Uh, it just was so different than the Methodist Church. But, you know, that, that's what they believe. That's how they do it. That's fine. Um, okay. We were talking about how they need to. I know, you, Bill. You talked about how they need to hear Hang the on. Book. Bill, wait a minute. Hang on one second, please. We we're talking about how they need to be hearing people. I think that's why he started off his conversation. Uh, this is what Isaiah said to us. And then yeah. the, our long quote we have is a passage from Isaiah. So that's what he's telling us. And sure enough, the Lord says, hey, you need to know in your heart uh, that what, you, what I'm going to do. That's good. Know. Thank you. Perfect. Question. Last one on there. What traditions do you follow that are part of your religious heritage that you grew up with, that you you always did? That's, you know, your family did it, you did it, raised your children that way, what a, what a religious heritage. What traditions do you follow that are part of? Yes, ma'am, Bev. Well, this is not a tradition that I grew up with, but I recently read a book by someone who was a member of a, a denomination in the Northeast, and she believed that on in Sunday morning worship, you should only sing the Psalms. And she based that on the fact that uh, God gave us a, a song book in the Bible, and so you shouldn't, when you're worshiping, you shouldn't sing any songs except for what's written in the Bible. And I started, of course, thinking of all the beautiful Wesleyan hymns and how so many of the hymns that we sing declare the gospel with their verses. And I thought how, how sad it was that, that those aren't incorporated. And I'm, I'm not saying that our hymns carry the same impact as the scripture but I am saying that there are a lot of hymns out there that are not in the Bible that definitely tell the good news yep rules oh uh, I think the christening of infants is a tradition that we've always followed, whether it was in the Lutheran church or the Methodist church. But the one the Methodists don't have is using Mo and David for communion. <laughs> Thank God. Okay, now it comes out. Very good. Thank you. Okay, a tough question. Two more questions. This is a tough one. What do you do in order to appear holy? What do you do? Do you wear something different? I don't know, I've never heard this, I've never thought about a question like this. I never thought about wearing, but this, I'm gonna answer this by what you said. I, I wear crops, I wear two crosses all the time. One I got in Israel, one I got on a mission trip in Costa Rica. But uh, what I do, uh, to, uh, hopefully I do, uh, and sometimes I don't appear holy, that's for sure. But if I'm ever called on to pray, I never hesitate to pray. Uh, if, if somebody needs a kind word, I hope I'm, it's in my head to re recognize they need a kind word and that they need the Lord. We're here to pray. Paula had something happen uh, during this, when we were on uh, this, this last trip. Some lady was talking about something. Paula said, well, let's just pray about it. Right there, she prayed, prayed for this lady. So, uh, I mean, things like that, little things that just show people that you know the Lord, that you're willing to say, hey, I am a Christian. I got the response, too. You what? I don't think that you, you wear anything but yourself to show. If it's in your heart, it shows. Yeah, that's true. Strong. Well said. Thank you. Others? Tough question.
Last question. How can we make sure that traditions and outward actions do not replace true holiness? Again, that's a little, that's tough. Okay. Um, How can we make sure that traditions and outward actions, things we do, do not replace true holiness? What can we do? Yes, ma'am. Okay. What Lois said has stuck in my brain. Um, we have the tradition of grape juice, and therefore, either grape juice or Mogan David could replace what is a true tradition, which is to honor Jesus and remember him. Very good. Anybody else? Tricia? I love this topic. I think we have lots and lots of traditions that um, show our unholiness. And, and that's judging other people who don't choose to live by some of the traditions that we think are biblical and they're really just people traditions. And I could name some of those, and I'm guiltier than anybody. Um, and just looking back through all the years of things that have changed, like burning women at the stake if they got pregnant or had sex out of wedlock. I mean, maybe it served a purpose then, but it doesn't seem very holy to me. <laughs> anyway, there are, there are a whole lot of things like that. Um, people who get tattoos was something that a lot of people held as horrible for a long time. And you see eventually things changing and some of it's for good and some of it isn't always. Like if you got burned at the stake for having sex out of wedlock, well maybe there wouldn't be so much of it. I mean there's ways to most of it The battery is getting lower than mine. Wait, better finish. Better finish. Because what we think in our minds is just as bad as what we do in reality, according to Jesus. <coughs> I'm going to kind of conclude. Thank you. <coughs> it's kind of like going to church, it's tradition. Most of us sit in the same pew or same area, tradition, call it what you will. Uh, <clears throat> then what happens Sunday afternoon, Sunday night, Monday morning, Tuesday, Wednesday? Uh, <laughs> Do what? It depends on whether the writers are winning or not. <laughs> okay, I gotta repeat that for the my depending on whether the Rangers are winning or not. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I, I'm not gonna get started on the fact that we all have friends and we have family that sometimes just think that, well, I went to church. And, and then when they say that, it, it's kind of like, well, I did my, I did my part. Okay. Uh, it, it's, it's, anyway. It's a foundation. Sunday schools are an, one step above and where you study the word. You discuss the word. It's not all one way. Uh, and then there's many, many things after that. 
activities nearly every day or every night uh, that are, uh, you know, God related. Uh, anyway, okay. Thank you. Let's close in prayer. Father God, thank you for this time together. Uh, our, we are. We say it every week, and we mean it. But we are incredibly blessed uh, through you being in our lives. Uh, I don't know how else personally I can really speak for myself, but I, 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 I couldn't get through. I don't think a good week without you, without your help. And it's okay. You want us to lean on you, I think. If that's not a song, it should be. <laughs> but you love it. You've got a smile on your face when we're putting our head on your shoulder and saying, hey, Father, direct me, help me, get me there. I can't do it without you. Wow. Uh, that's, that's fine. That's not a weakness. That just being honest. Uh, Father, thank you for always being there. Always being there. Uh, we thank you for everything you give us, but at the top of that list, as I like to say, every week, at the top of that list is your sacrifice, your son, Jesus, and it's in his special and beautiful name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.